AMD doesn't want you to game on this GPU in 2022. I mean, fair enough, it originates from a time before DX12 and Vulkan were even a thing, so some games just flat out don't work. But this is more than that. After years of fine wine tech updates keeping the R9 280 relevant in games, AMD are done maintaining this series and have finally pulled the plug. Out of sheer desperation, I'm about to perform CPR. I've covered the R9 280 before, back at the start of the channel in early 2021. Since then there have been some changes around here. For a start, there's the games. This time I'm benchmarking 10 titles, three of which I covered last year and which have seen updates in the intervening months, the rest being all new additions to the roster. And then of course there's the aforementioned discontinuation of first gen GCN cards by AMD, meaning the latest official drivers are over 6 months old at this point. As I've mentioned in a couple of other videos, linked below, there is an alternative for those who are willing to install unofficial drivers on their PC. For my testing, I'll be using these Nimes modded drivers to ensure maximum compatibility. My test PC has an overclocked 6 core Ryzen APU and 16 gigs of fast DDR4, though I will also run the tests a second time on a more reasonably priced configuration in order to give budget gamers an idea of what they can expect from this card in 2022. The original Sony PS4 had graphics performance slightly better than that of the AMD Radeon R7 260, and the console still manages to run God of War at 1080 30fps. It shouldn't be a big surprise then that the R9 280 beats that number. It may be a little surprising it didn't do better. My testing saw just 34fps on average and 28fps 1% lows. Not unplayable, obviously, but I had higher hopes. Adding ultra quality FSR takes that average number up to 43 and doesn't look half bad, though it does create some noticeable artefacts which are harder to ignore in a cinematic game like this one. The quad core setup scored the same as the 6 core at full 1080, though the FSR run saw the entry level PC run a few percent lower than the mid range one. The Final Fantasy VII Remake is another former PS4 exclusive, so again, performance on the R9 280 is above acceptable levels. 1080 with high textures and shadows manages 46 FPS on average, though I think it might have run out of VRAM at a couple of moments as there were some more severe stutters than I'm used to here. 1% lows were just short of 30, but 0.1% lows were actually in single digits. Dropping the shadow quality to low keeps the 1% score above 30, but there was still the occasional spike. Dropping both to low has virtually no effect, and both the mid-range and entry-level PC setups perform about the same here. You might be wondering why there are only 10 games in this benchmark video compared to my usual 12. Well, it seems like each year there are more and more games which require the DX12 feature set, and while on the face of it the R9 280 does run DX12 games, it only supports the 11.1 .1 feature set. Games like Guardians of the Galaxy, Halo Infinite, and Elden Ring all refuse to launch on the R9 280 as a result. I've heard of workarounds, and I even tried the Elden Ring DLL swap to no avail. If you have an R9 280 or other GCN1 card, be sure to google it and make sure your card can run your desired game at all before you go buying it. This is a pretty bad showing for the R9 280. Forza Horizon 5 seems to have a preference for newer architectures, running far better on even the integrated Vega graphics of my Ryzen 5 5600G than on this former high-end GCN graphics card. 1080 medium is only 26 FPS on average, with lows in the teens, and dropping quality to low only sees the numbers go up to 31 and 23 respectively. Even adding FSR can't save things, with the quality setting adding only just over 1 frame per second to the average. The final nail in the coffin is the issue with decals, meaning crowds, car logos and license plates have black backgrounds and are incorrectly sorted, causing them to stick out in fog and dust. Not a good experience all round. Not much has changed for R9 280 owners who want to explore Night City in 2022. 
Although my benchmark run this year is a little different from last year's, the results aren't too dissimilar. The biggest difference is that instead of running at 720 low, I'm running at 1080 low with FSR quality. This is basically the same thing, and I'd be lying if I said I saw benefit in FSR over the game's own anti-aliasing solution, but maybe the forthcoming FSR 2 will have a bigger effect. Either way, frame rates have only improved by about 5%, averaging 38 with lows of 23. The quad core suffers a little in 1% lows, but scores roughly the same on average. Rainbow Six Extraction doesn't have the same low spec friendly appeal of its cousin, Rainbow Six Siege. At 1080 high, the game only manages 40 FPS on average, with lows of 29. This is not ideal for a first person shooter, but I dare say many of you will still find it acceptable. I did a second run at half resolution and it snuck in a little under the 60 FPS mark. Perhaps with some quality tweaking it might be possible to hit that 60 FPS average, or you could even use the internal dynamic resolution scaling, a feature which I don't use just because it's harder to compare graphics cards that way. Splitgate is my esports title of choice for 2022, and the R9280 puts in a good showing here. In the MPG PC setup, it scores an average frame rate of 122 FPS and 1% lows of 77 at 1080 Epic settings. The quad core RPG PC is about 6 to 7% slower on average, mainly due to an increase in drops into the 50s. Of course, the game isn't the kind that benefits hugely from high quality settings, so if you have a monitor that can take advantage of that high frame rate, you could get an even more stable frame rate with some quality tweaks. I had a miserable night testing the 280 in Vanguard. I'm going to blame the quality settings of course, as even at 1920x1080 the low settings preset looks ugly as hell. Interestingly though, frame rates really aren't that bad. Full 1080 manages about 50 FPS, and while adding FSR won't blow your mind, it adds a little more smoothness to proceedings. FSR Ultra is about 10% faster at 55 FPS, though 1% lows fare considerably better. FSR quality sees barely any improvement over Ultra, and looks significantly worse. It's not easy to do like-for-like -like comparisons in Fortnite across chapters, but the 280 appears to have lost about 10 FPS in the last year or so. 1080 at competitive settings scores 88 FPS on average this year, compared to about 98 FPS in 2021. 1% lows look to have been devastated, dropping from over 50 FPS last year to about 30 FPS this year, but live service games built on the Unreal Engine aren't the most stutter-free experiences in the world. I did try a run at high settings with epic view distance, uh, but I can't recommend it. The 31 FPS average is misleading. The input lag was indescribable, as this one legged kicking contest of a duel shows. Battlefield 2042 at 1080 low settings feels about the same as Fortnite at 1080 high. 30 FPS averages with 14 FPS lows feels like playing through treacle and certainly isn't a recommended experience. On the other hand, dropping resolution to 1280x720 pushes the average to 40 and 1% lows close to 30, but visibility at a distance then becomes difficult. I don't know if many people actually want to play this game at all right now, but if you are planning on doing so with an R9 280, I'd probably suggest trying one of the earlier Battlefield games instead. Wrapping things up then, with Call of Duty Warzone. This game has always been a glitchy mess on low-end hardware, and this is no exception. Frame rates aren't terrible, at least at the low quality settings, 1080 manages about 45 FPS, and 67% scaling lifts that up close to 60. Either way though, the game will give you a VRAM warning, and in my case, failed to load textures. Like, on anything. I'm not sure, but I think this might actually look worse than PUBG Mobile. 
The quad core numbers are a handful of points lower than the six core, but not enough to worry about too much. I've been an ardent fan and defender of GCN1 cards for budget gaming for a few years now. The R9 270, HD7870 and similar cards were my standard recommendations for gamers looking for sub £50 graphics cards, and those with a bit more cash to spend wouldn't go wrong with stepping up to the R9 280 or HD7950. I'm sorry to say that in 2022 my recommendation won't come so quickly. If you have one already, there's still some mileage to be had, but for the most part you're better off sticking to older titles and esports games. If you're shopping for a £100 GPU today, I'd be more inclined to recommend something more compatible, like the R9 380 or GTX 960, both of which have 4GB options and are fully DX12 compatible. Hope that was helpful, thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time.